Thank you very much, uh, Paul. It's my great honor to um, be the person who reads the citations and along with Sig Gisler uh, hands out the awards. And you know, there are certain days in the academic year that really mean an enormous amount. And last week we had commencement graduation ceremonies here and 40,000 people packed into that space uh, right out there, which is one of the truly great academic spaces on the planet. Uh, we have an honorary degree dinner uh, It's you know, really says what the institution is all about. We have convocation for students who come here new and fresh and wanting to learn, and that happens in early September. But the Pulitzer Prize event, this event, stands right up there with those great, great ceremonies that really bespeak the values of this place and of the profession and of the arts. Uh, that all of you have so successfully uh, achieved in. So it's a great, uh, a great privilege for me to, to do this. And Paul is right. I mean, uh, it's an incredible discussion that takes place about the works. It's an opportunity for everybody to speak and people say how they felt about the work. And, and uh, there's listening. I mean, one of the few times that people actually listen to each other and then change their minds and uh, it's a it's a great great group to be part of and of course the jurors are unbelievable I mean the fact that they read all of this so carefully and write up really illuminating uh, and occasionally brilliant summaries of the work is a is a great tribute to the process so let me begin <clears throat> Sig so we start with public service <laughs> For a distinguished example of meritorious public service by a newspaper or news site through the use of its journalistic resources, including the use of stories, editorials, cartoons, photographs, graphics, videos, databases, multimedia, or interactive presentations, or other visual material. The award goes to the Sun Sentinel of Fort Lauderdale, Florida for its well-documented investigation of off-duty police officers who recklessly speed and endanger the lives of citizens leading, in this case, to disciplinary action and other steps to curtail a deadly hazard. Congratulations. Please come forward. So Accepting this is uh, Sally Keston and John Maines. Congratulations. So we get. Okay. As you can tell, I'm reading the. Um, the language about the prizes, and even though it may get somewhat repetitive, and even though they're really elongated sentences, the fact that the board debates these over and over and over again makes them very meaningful. So pay close attention, please. For a distinguished example of local reporting of breaking news that, as quickly as possible, captures events accurately as they occur, and as time passes, illuminates, provides context, and expands upon the initial coverage. The Denver Post staff, for its comprehensive coverage of the mass shooting at a movie theater in Aurora, Colorado, that killed 12 and injured 58, using journalistic tools from Twitter and Facebook to video and written reports, both to capture a breaking story and to provide context. Kevin Dale, Tim Rasmussen, Leanne Calepio, RJ Singosti, and Curtis Lee will accept the awards. Please come forward.
Investigative reporting. For a distinguished example of investigative reporting using any available journalistic tool, David Barstow and Alexandra Zanik von Bertraub of the New York Times for their reports on how Walmart used widespread bribery to dominate the market in Mexico, resulting in changes in company practices. Congratulations. Explanatory reporting, or a distinguished example of explanatory reporting that illuminates a significant and complex subject, demonstrating mastery of the subject, lucid writing, and clear presentation using any available journalistic tool. The New York Times staff, for its penetrating look into the business practices by Apple and other technology companies, that illustrates the darker side of a changing global economy for workers and consumers. Keith Bradshaw, Charles Duhigg, and David Barboza of the paper will accept the award. Pulitzer Prize for local reporting. For a distinguished example of reporting on significant issues of local concern, demonstrating originality and community expertise using any journalistic tool. Brad Schrade and Jeremy Olson and Glenn Howitt of the Star Tribune Minneapolis for their powerful reports on the spike in infant deaths at poorly regulated daycare homes resulting in legislative action to strengthen rules. Congratulations to the Star Tribune. Okay, he has glasses. They'll have to sort this out. Pulitzer Prize for national reporting. For a distinguished example of reporting on national affairs using any available journalistic tool, Lisa Song, Elizabeth McGowan, and David Hasmeyer of Inside Climate News, Brooklyn, New York, for their rigorous reports on flawed regulation of the nation's oil pipelines, focusing on potential ecological dangers posed by diluted bitumen or Dilbit, a controversial form of oil. Congratulations to you.
international reporting. For a distinguished example of reporting on international affairs using any available journalistic tool, David Barboza of the New York Times for his striking exposure of corruption at high levels of the Chinese government, including billions in secret wealth owned by relatives of the Prime Minister, well-documented work published in the face of heavy pressures from the Chinese officials. Congratulations, David, David Barboza of the New York Times. Feature writing. For a distinguished example of feature writing, giving prime consideration to quality of writing, originality, and concision using any available journalistic tool. John Branch of the New York Times for his evocative narrative about skiers killed in an avalanche and the science that explains, explains such disasters, a project enhanced by its deft integration of multimedia elements. Congratulations, John Branch, New York Times. Next award is for distinguished commentary, again using any available journalistic tool, Brad Stevens of the Wall Street Journal for his incisive columns on American foreign policy and domestic politics, often enlivened by a contrarian twist. Congratulations, Brad Stevens. Next award is for distinguished criticism using any available journalistic tool. Philip Kennicott of the Washington Post for his eloquent and passionate essays on art and the social forces that underlie it. A critic who always strives to make his topics and targets relevant to readers. Congratulations, Philip Kennicott of the Washington Post. Next prize is for distinguished editorial writing. The test of excellence being clearness of style, moral purpose, sound reasoning, and power to influence public opinion in what the writer conceives to be the right direction using any available journalistic tool. Tim Nickens and Daniel Ruth of the Tampa Bay Times, St. Petersburg, Florida, for their diligent campaign that helped reverse a decision to end fluoridation of the water supply for the 700,000 residents of the newspaper's home county. Please welcome and congratulate Tom Nickens, Daniel Ruth.
editorial cartooning. For a distinguished cartoon or portfolio of cartoons characterized by originality, editorial effectiveness, quality of drawing, and pictorial effect, published as a still drawing, animation, or both, Steve Sack of the Tar Star Tribune, Minneapolis, for his diverse collection of cartoons using an original style and clever ideas to drive home an unmistakable point of view. Congratulations, Steve Sack of the Star Tribune. Breaking news photography. <clears throat> For a distinguished example of breaking news photography in black and white or color, which may consist of a photograph or photographs. Rodrigo Abd, Manu Bravo, Narciso Contreras, Khalil Hamra, Mohammed Mahizen of the Associated Press for their compelling coverage of the civil war in Syria, producing memorable images under extreme hazard. Congratulations. Feature photography. For a distinguished example of feature photography in black and white or color, which may consist of a photograph or photographs. Javier Manzano, a freelance photographer, for his extraordinary picture distributed by Angers France Press of two Syrian rebel soldiers tensely guarding their position as beams of light stream through bullet holes in a nearby metal wall. Congratulations to both of you. And now we go to letters. The Pulitzer Prize in Fiction. For a distinguished fiction by an American author, preferably dealing with American life, The Orphan Master's Son by Adam Johnson, an exquisitely crafted novel that carries the reader on an adventuresome journey into the depths of totalitarian North Korea and into the most intimate spaces of the human heart. Congratulations, Adam Johnson. Pulitzer Prize in Drama for a distinguished play by an American author, preferably original in its source and dealing with American life. Disgraced by Ayad Akhtar, a moving play that depicts a successful corporate lawyer painfully forced to consider why he has for so long camouflaged 
his Pakistani Muslim heritage. Congratulations, Ayad Akhtar. History. For a distinguished and appropriately documented book on the history of the United States. Embers of War, The Fall of an Empire and the Making of America's Vietnam by Frederick Lugaval, a balanced, deeply researched history of how, as French colonial rule faltered, a succession of American leaders moved step by step down a road toward full-blown war. Congratulations, Frederick Lagoval. Biography. For a distinguished and appropriately documented biography or autobiography by an American author. The Black Count, Glory, Revolution, Betrayal, and the Real Count of Monte Cristo by Tom Reese Rice, a compelling story of a forgotten swashbuckling hero of mixed race whose bold exploits were captured by his son, Alexandre Dumas in famous 19th century novels. Congratulations, Tom Rice. Poetry. For a distinguished volume of original verse by an American author, Stag's Leap by Sharon Olds, a book of unflinching poems on the author's divorce that examine love, sorrow, and the limits of self knowledge. Congratulations, Sharon Olds. Pulitzer Prize in Nonfiction. For a distinguished and appropriately documented book of nonfiction by an American author that is not eligible for consideration in any other category. Devil in the Grove, Thurgood Marshall, The Groveland Boys, and The Dawn of a New America by Gilbert King, a richly detailed chronicle of racial injustice in the Florida town of Groveland, Revlin in 1949, involving four black men falsely accused of rape and drawing a civil rights crusader and eventual Supreme Court justice into the legal battle. Congratulations, Gilbert King. Congratulations. The Pulitzer Prize in Music, the last award for a distinguished musical composition by an American that has had its first performance or recording in the United States during the year. Caroline Shaw for Partita for Eight Voices, recording released on October 30, 2012, a highly polished and inventive, an inventive a cappella work 
uniquely embracing speech, whispers, sighs, murmurs, wordless melodies, and novel vocal effects. Congratulations, Caroline Shaw. Thank you, Mr. President. And ladies and gentlemen, thank all of you for attending our awards celebration. All the work of the winners can be found on our website, Pulitzer.org. In the next few days, we'll also be posting a uh, gallery of uh, pictures, and we'll have a video of the event on our website as well. Uh, my final duty is to ask the winners to please assemble on the steps outside the building for your class photo. Once again, thank you very much and have a great day. David?